I'm starting with the yellow first of all, wet in wet at the top, and this is where the light is. So you may even wanna leave a few gaps there of just white paper so it looks like the sunlight coming through. So this is the yellow with the raw sienna, so it's slightly warmer. I'm just painting it underneath that yellow. Now the yellow green, applying that now, going through the dandelion, through the negative shapes there where I haven't masked it out. So it's quite yellow green on the photograph. So I'm applying a little bit more of that yellow green now, really loading my brush working my way down i've decided to use the yellow with the raw sienna here over some of the leaves so to make sure that i've got my light there i don't want to put too much green because i'm going to be working on those later wet on dry so working my way down with this yellow green going past the stem because the stem is dry so i've not actually painted or wet that and using a little bit more of the yellow green there at the bottom and just being careful there just to sort of paint right up to the stem. Just finishing off with that yellow green and now I'm loading my brush with the green. So it's a little bit more phthalo blue in there. It's a lovely limey green color though, isn't it? Just painting this now damp into wet. So the paper is still quite wet, but the paint, as you can see, isn't running as much. And going back in with some of that yellow green there, just around the edge of the dandelion, but also in those gaps where I haven't masked out. A little bit more of that green, damp into damp now, in the foreground area, so it comes forward and it kind of makes it look more 3D. I've added a little bit more phthalo blue to that green color there, slightly thicker, and I'm just painting this damp into damp, this darker green in the foreground, also tilting to get things moving, so they look kind of like grasses and foliage in the foreground there, which is quite nice to do. So what I'm gonna do now is sprinkle some sea salt, you can use table salt, onto the damp surface, mostly around the top of the dandelion, um, just to create some nice sort of light areas. So I'm gonna let that dry naturally, just want to get a little bit more of some darker tonal values here in the center of the dandelion again to create contrast and painting around the left side there damp into damp with my size six brush taking off that excess fluid so I don't get any back runs now I'm going to allow my painting to dry naturally to enable the salt to work and as you can see there it's worked quite quite nicely creating some light textured marks. So I'm mixing up some colours here for the tips of the leaves starting with burnt sienna and I've added a touch of phthalo blue but it wasn't quite the right colour so I'm adding a touch more red. Painting this wet on dry with my size 6 brush rinse my brush there and I'm just pushing in a little bit of water there, diluting that colour but also creating a soft edge at the top of that mark, adding a touch more water and it creates quite a nice effect there. And I'm just rinsing my brush and just pushing clean water um, down towards the red paint there and painting some of the light yellow leaves there wet on dry with my size six round brush. So just working on all the sort of light green areas here. I'm painting wet on dry, some of the dark greens now. I'm just sort of working my way round, really thinking about where these darks are, taking my time. I've mixed up some raw sienna, pretty much on its own, quite watery. And I'm just painting a first layer on the stem there with my size six brush, working wet on dry. And I'm just using a little bit of that burnt sienna and red mix and dropping that in wet in wet there. And now I'm mixing up some ultramarine with a little bit of burnt sienna there to make a dark brown and I'm painting that wet into wet. I'm going to allow my painting to dry once more. So I'm gonna work on the background using my circle stencil and I'm going to use the bouquet effect. I'm using a natural sponge, but you can use one of those magic sponges as well that you use for household decorating to get paint marks off the wall. You can use a stencil brush as well or a hog hair brush to work the paint off as well because watercolour isn't permanent you can actually remove the paint. As you can see, that's exactly what I'm doing here. And it's working quite nicely with my natural sponge. And you notice I actually use the paper towel to get rid of any excess water and paint as well. 
is I've mixed up some ultramarine and burnt umber. It is very, very dilute. And I'm going to paint wet on dry some of these very sort of light shadow colours here. I want to keep a lot of the white as well. So just finishing off the marks there. And there's a little bit of raw sienna here mixed with the burnt umber. And I'm just painting thin, light, pale lines here just for some more details. Going back in with that raw sienna touch of burnt umber painting very long thin lines here to create some more details coming from the center of the dandelion out again i'm using some of the dark green now that was the Payne's gray with the yellow i'm painting this damp into damp i'm using my size six round brush and just sort of sort of injecting these darks in here um, sort of to make the dandelion look more 3D. And I'm painting some of the darks on the leaves now, wet on dry, using that dark green paint. Dipping my brush into the yellow and the raw sienna there, painting that really lovely yellow colour. Getting a touch of the light green, mixed a bit of dark in there to make a mid green and dropping that in wet in wet, just around the edges there. So I'm really varying my sort of colours, the light, the mid and the dark green, but also the tonal values. The dark green obviously will give you a very dark tonal value where the shadows are. So again, sort of using this mid green, working wet on dry and still using my size six brush there. And there's, if you look at the photograph, there's quite a lot of detail here. So take your time, really have a look um, at the, where the, especially where the mid and darks are. We've painted a lot of the lights already in the first stage, but I'm painting a little bit of the light green here and just working my way along, sort of looking for the darks, the mid and the light greens and I'm just painting this darker sort of brown color um, on the edge you could just use something like burnt umber mixed with some Payne's gray for that as well and it really does pull that dandelion away from the background. I'm using some mid green now and I am painting pretty much damp into damp with my size six brush. Some of the gaps of the dandelion and that sort of sort of more mid to dark green will bring out the light and white of the dandelion as well. So I'm adding a touch of that dark green there, the Payne's Grey mixed with the yellow wet on dry at the center and just sort of finessing and softening with the tip of my brush to create some of these darks here. Charles painting very thin lines here, pretty much wet on dry, but this little bit of detail here kind of brings the dandelion to life. I'm sort of working my way from the middle outwards using that sort of dark green mix with the burnt sienna. I've mixed up here some burnt umber again with the ultramarine. It's slightly darker than that sort of light shadow color I used before. And I just wanted to add a few more little darks um, just on top of some of the areas that I painted before, just to darken them up a little bit. So it's a good time now to allow my painting to dry. I'm finishing off with a little spatter. So, so I really hope you enjoyed this edited version of my exclusive dandelion tutorial. And it gives you an idea of the type of tutorials that I have available exclusively on my Patreon membership. And here is the homepage of my Patreon membership and you can search for tutorials here in the search bar. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna search for the exclusive dandelion tutorial and it should open that up and here is the dandelion. You can play it from here and you can click this square here to enlarge your screen. So you can see I've got a bigger screen and I'm just showing you a close up here of painting this dandelion tutorial. You can click that square again and it takes you back to the smaller screen. You can also slow down the speed of the video. Just click this little wheel here and then click playback speed. And if you click on that, you've got some choices, 75%, 50% and 25%. So you can try those out. The only thing is if I'm speaking, I might be speaking very slowly, but it is very helpful to slow down the tutorial. So going back to the description here, in the description, you can find a link for my website where you can get access to all the tutorials. So I've got beginners, exclusive, limited colors, landscape, etc. you name it, lots of different playlists. So I'm going on the beginner playlist here and you can see there's a variety of different tutorials all you have to do is click that thumbnail to take you back to patreon
Here are all my exclusive tutorials. I've got a variety of different subjects and lots of learning levels, including beginner and improver. And it makes searching for my Patreon tutorials so much easier. All you need to do is to browse through the playlist, through the thumbnails, and then click on the thumbnail, which is what I'm doing here. It will take you back to Patreon where you can get access to the outline sketches. And this is where it's located at the bottom of the description, just above the comments. You click it, it downloads it onto your device. And as you can see here, here is the outline sketch for the dandelion. Going back to Patreon here, you can also get access to the members private Facebook group. And here is the home page where you and other members can share their work. And it's a really lovely, supportive community. So I really hope this tutorial has given you an insight into my Patreon membership and the type of tutorials that I have available on there. If you would like to support the tutorials that I publish here on YouTube, why not think about joining my Patreon membership? More details about the membership can be found in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.